Late stage liver cancer. Willow wants to make a movie to commemorate her idealized first love. She even asked me to be the male lead. I begged her. Willow, don't be so cruel. Don't let everyone know I'm just Daniel Wong's substitute. But she wouldn't listen, forcing me to take the role with iron-fisted methods. Five months later, at the premiere of the movie Starlight, she was asked which scene impressed her the most. Willow reminisced. I have to say, Alex's affectionate gaze is somewhat like Daniel's. Her words almost made me laugh with tears. You should remember it well, because, my eyes were unfamiliar and cold. That was the last time I loved you. Willow, let's get a divorce. Once a three-time Best Actor winner, Daniel is dying. Willow Lu decided to make a documentary film for him, to record his brilliant and dazzling life, as the last gift to him. In the vast sea of people, out of hundreds of actors, there wasn't a single one that Willow found satisfactory. In her heart, Daniel was so radiant and noble that no one could compare. So, she came to me. I used to be a minor actor in the industry. Later, I was forced to leave the entertainment circle because of my resemblance to Daniel in appearance and temperament. And the person who forced me out was Willow, my wife, Alex. Didn't you always want to make a name for yourself in the entertainment industry? Now, I'm giving you this chance. Willow threw the script into my arms, looking down at me as if she were bestowing a favor. She has always treated me this way, cold, arrogant, dismissive, even though she was the one who proposed to me. But she still felt that I was an obstacle between her and Daniel's love, but I agreed. After all, I also wanted to know what made this Daniel, whom fans called the starlight scattered among mortals, so different. That made my wife remember him for so many years. Agreeing to play the role of Daniel in the movie Starlight immediately caused a storm on the internet. Many people couldn't understand why an obscure actor who had retired from the industry would be chosen to play the role of Daniel, a three-time Best Actor winner. They simply didn't believe that I could perfectly portray this deep and charismatic character. Some even dug into my past. They uncovered everything about my time as a bit part actor in the entertainment industry five years ago, especially the part about why I left the industry. Five years ago, I was a bit part actor in Hengdian. Although it was tough, I received a lot of praise from directors. One director once praised me, saying, even though you're just playing a small role with one shot, you still treat it seriously and bring life to the character. You're a good seedling for an actor. Alex, this vast entertainment industry will surely have a place for you sooner or later. But I never got my big break. Willow suddenly appeared in front of me and signed a 10-year contract with me. She was the CEO of the biggest film company, and all the artists under her company were well known in the industry. So when she handed me a thick stack of contracts, I was overjoyed. I thought that finally, someone had discovered this pearl covered in dust and would let me shine one day, but I was disappointed. Willow didn't genuinely believe in me. She just didn't want someone who looked like Daniel and had comparable acting skills to remain active in the industry. She didn't want anyone to pose a threat to Daniel. Even if the threat never materialized, she wanted to prevent it preemptively. So, within less than two years of signing with Willow's Wong Company, all my news was negative. Being a diva, disrespecting seniors, humiliating extras, and so on, although none of it was serious, it ruined my little remaining public support. At that time, I didn't know that everything was orchestrated by Willow, and I was still worried about how to explain myself to my mentor, but Willow extended her hand to me at that time. Alex, it's okay. If you can't stay in the entertainment industry, you can stay by my side. I know you like me, and I like you too. Alex, let's get married. So, I left the entertainment industry and became Willow's husband. A husband in name only, known by very few people. My scandals were exposed, and there was a backlash on the internet against me playing the role of Daniel. For a time, it caused quite a stir. The name Alex became more famous than my years of struggling in the entertainment industry. Willow was very angry. She printed out some online comments and threw them in my face. Alex, you're useless. I gave you a chance, and you blew it. Useless. She didn't hesitate to curse at me. I warn you, if you mess this up, I'll make you regret it. I bent down and picked up the scattered papers one by one. I looked at her coldly. Willow, you know best where these scandals came from, because you were the one who orchestrated it all to end my career. Willow's angry face immediately darkened. She turned to look at me, her eyes filled with coldness. Alex, since you know my methods, you better behave. Otherwise, I'll make sure you become a pariah. Hated by everyone, I couldn't help but laugh softly. Willow, don't forget, who needs who now? I can refuse to take this movie and still live off you, you know. I don't care about other people's opinions. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given up the chance to clear my name three years ago and willingly become the men behind Willow. The term, living off a woman, is really unpleasant. But because I loved Willow, I accepted it all. But some people never know what's good for them. Willow and I didn't meet just five years ago. I knew her. Liked her. Much earlier than she imagined. In fact, we were college classmates. 
She was the shining star in the crowd, always drawing attention wherever she went. So she never noticed me in the crowd, accustomed to admiring gazes. No matter how many times we passed each other, her eyes never saw me. That one time, Willow's scarf was blown away by the wind and landed in front of me. When I picked it up and handed it back to her, she smiled at me. Thank you, classmate. You're welcome. Just five words. But they stayed with me for a long time. When I tossed and turned at night, I always thought of her smile. After graduation, I dove into the entertainment industry, chasing my acting dream. A year later, she graduated, returned to her family business, and became the CEO of the largest entertainment company. Years later, when we met again, Willow had already forgotten me. When she saw me, there was a moment of amazement and surprise in her eyes, but it lasted only a moment. Alex, I've seen your performance. It's good. Would you like to sign with my Wong company? I said, I would, because there, I had another dream. Later, scandals about me emerged one after another. As a minor actor without resources, I could no longer stand in the entertainment industry. That day, I sat on the rooftop of the company, blowing in the cold wind, smoking cigarette after cigarette. It was then that Willow opened the rooftop door and walked to my side against the wind. The wind lifted her beautiful long hair as she took the half-burnt cigarette from my hand, took a light puff, and blew out a beautiful smoke ring. When the cigarette burned out and the last ember died, she turned to look at me. Alex, do you like me? Some people think they hide their feelings well, not knowing they've already been seen through. For a moment, I didn't know how to respond. The words brewing in my heart became tangled and stuck in my throat. After a moment of strange silence, Willow stood in front of me. Her gaze was intense and burning, and at that moment, I saw deep affection in her eyes. She hooked her arm around my neck and kissed my lips. Alex, it's okay. If you can't stay in the entertainment industry, you can stay by my side. I know you like me, and I like you too. Alex, let's get married. At that moment, my mind went blank. The tender dream I had chased for many years was now standing in front of me, telling me in a gentle and seductive voice. She wanted to marry me. The wind blew into my eyes, making them sting a little. I said, okay. After many years, I finally caught my dream. When I got home, Willow was not there. In the brightly lit villa, there was only emptiness and solitude. It was very quiet, quiet enough to hear my heartbeat. In the early days of our marriage, Willow and I were in love for a while. I would make her a sumptuous breakfast every morning and prepare her clothes for going out. She would praise my cooking and the way I matched her clothes, and then give me a deep kiss before leaving. In the evenings, I would sit on the couch waiting for her to come home, and after her social engagements and drinking, I would bring her a glass of honey water. She always wrapped her arms around my neck, nuzzling against it, and said, Alex, it's so good to have you, but now, in this once warm home, Willow had not been back for a long time. Since the day Daniel returned to the country, it had been three months, I just didn't expect Willow to come back today. The moment the door opened, Willow was already drunk, staggering. She took off her high heels and walked quickly towards me. Alex, why? Why does Daniel have this disease? Her cold hand touched my cheek. Her blurred eyes staring at my face for a long time before she spoke softly. You two look so much alike. Why isn't it you who has to die? Silence fell. At that moment, my heart ached so much that I couldn't breathe. After a moment of standoff, I pushed Willow away. It's really a pity. Willow, I will live well. And your beloved Daniel will be tormented by disease and die horribly. Maybe Willow cared too much about Daniel. Even though she was already dazed with drunkenness, she still sobered up when she heard Daniel's name. She slapped me hard. Tears welling up in her eyes. Alex, how can you be so cruel? Willow spoke with a choked voice. The woman who had always been strong was shedding tears at this moment. I never thought that Willow and I would end up in such a miserable situation. Three years of marriage, a period of love, ultimately left us only with resentment. I looked coldly at Willow. Her concern for Daniel filled me with unprecedented jealousy and anger. I approached her, becoming extremely harsh for the first time. Willow, stop dreaming. You will never be with Daniel. He's dying. People with liver cancer die emaciated and unrecognizable. Horribly. Willow. Soon you will only be able to visit him in the cemetery. Willow's expression turned angry bit by bit in front of me. Bang. A sharp pain shot through my head, followed by a wet sensation spreading from the top down. The taste was incredibly metallic and sweet. Willow looked at the ashtray in her hand in shock. The red blood staining it. It was the blood from my head. Willow had hit me with the ashtray from the coffee table. She frantically dropped the ashtray helplessly clutching my sleeve. At this moment, her drunkenness dissipated, and she was very sober. Alex, are you okay? I, I didn't mean to. She started to cry. I didn't mean to. You shouldn't have provoked me with Daniel's life and death. The hot blood flowed to my eyelids, hanging on my lashes, making my eyes tremble. I didn't say anything. I had nothing to say. 
The greatest sorrow is when the heart dies. At this moment, I truly understood it. In the hospital, the nurse carefully bandaged my wound. Seeing my tightly pressed lips, she said, If it hurts, just say it. Don't hold it in. I shook my head slightly. Just sitting quietly, the pain in my heart couldn't be soothed by any medicine. Ever since I knew that in Willow's heart, there was only one Daniel, and I was just a substitute she obtained through manipulative means. My heart had become numb. Sitting on the hospital bed, looking at the ink-like night outside the window, I couldn't help but feel sorrow. Unconsciously, I thought of my past days. My father died early, and my mother, suffering from illness, left me when I was 15, unable to escape the torment of disease. As she lay dying, she tightly held my hand, her eyes already lifeless. Alex, living is too painful. Mom can't hold on anymore. Live well. Don't blame mom for being cruel and leaving you. After graduating from college, I went to Hengdian to be a bit part actor. No matter what kind of role, I always treated it with utmost sincerity. Even without a single line. Even just a back view. Even a fleeting shot. Nothing stopped my passion for acting. That's how I worked for three years. Although it was hard, I enjoyed it. Every different role allowed me to experience different lives. At that time, the boxed lunches tasted pretty good. Later, Willow found me. I thought it was the end of my hardships, but I fell into an unfathomable abyss. It destroyed my love and my career. I didn't notice when Willow entered the ward. It wasn't until the night breeze at the window made me feel cold that I closed the window and turned around. Willow was standing behind me, holding my medical report in her hand. She trembled as she handed the report to me, even her voice trembling. Alex, your oh positive blood. I frowned. I couldn't understand Willow's expression, whether it was surprise or shock. I took the medical report. It detailed my condition. Mild concussion, but nothing serious. Just needed a few days of rest. So I didn't understand why Willow looked so shocked. I ignored Willow and quietly lay back on the bed. I don't know why. That night, Willow stayed quietly by my bedside. Not sleeping all night. A mild concussion is not a big deal. But Willow, surprisingly, took it seriously. Ignoring my protests, she insisted the doctor conduct a comprehensive examination on me. In the following days, she behaved unusually gentle towards me. Alex, the doctor said you need to eat more fruits. I've already peeled an apple for you. Eat it. Her eager gaze showed no trace of pretense. For a moment, I thought we had returned to the early days of our marriage. Back then, Willow looked at me with such tenderness. But ever since Daniel returned, that look was no longer mine. However, I soon discovered the reason behind Willow's sudden change. That day, Willow went out with the doctor. She returned to the ward absent-mindedly two hours later. Willow sat by my bed in silence for a long time. Her eyes were heavy with sorrow. Daniel's illness is flaring up more frequently. He doesn't have much time left. I raised an eyebrow. Indifferent. Daniel had liver cancer but couldn't find a suitable liver donor, leading to severe deterioration. He didn't have much time left. Everyone knew this. There were even fanatics who tried to donate their own livers to save Daniel, but none matched. It seemed his fate was destined to be a young and tragic death, forever remembered as a white moonlight. Willow was silent for a moment again. Alex, your liver is a match for Daniel's. It felt like a bomb exploded in my head, leaving me in chaos. After a moment, I came back to my senses. No more words were needed. I understood her meaning. I stared at Willow's beautiful face for a long time, then spoke calmly. So, Willow, the past few days weren't about giving me a full checkup, but about matching my liver to see if it could be transplanted to Daniel, right? At this moment, jealousy and sorrow intertwined in my heart, and I couldn't help but shed tears. It was my first time crying in front of Willow and it would be the last time. Willow looked up at me but couldn't help avoiding my gaze. Alex, it's just a liver donation. It won't have much impact on you, but without your liver, Daniel will die. Alex, I promise you, if you're willing to donate your liver, I will be wholeheartedly devoted to you and never have any contact with Daniel again. I placed my hand over my liver. For some reason, I felt a faint pain there, and my heart ached too. I looked into Willow's eyes. Willow, a liver transplant carries risks. I might die too. Have you thought it through? Willow hesitated, pressing her lips together in silence for a long time, but eventually nodded. The breath I had been holding finally let out. She knew. She knew everything. Yet she still chose to risk my life to save another man. Then, I had nothing more to worry about. I shook my head. No, I'm not willing. Willow, I will never donate my liver to Daniel. Give up on this idea. I refuse to donate my liver to Daniel. To my surprise, Willow didn't press the issue. Instead, she quickly proceeded with the film's opening ceremony and began shooting. Perhaps seeing my confusion, Willow gave a bitter smile. The liver is yours. If you don't want to, no one can force you. Alex, you're my husband. I won't force you to do anything you don't want to do. As for Daniel, 
Maybe it's true what they say online, that he's a star meant to stay in the sky, not on earth for long. Willow handed me the script and continued, Alex, I hope you can use all your skills to perfectly portray Daniel. She paused, her voice choking a bit. You've already read the script. Daniel truly was a very, very good person. She wasn't wrong about that. From the script, I learned that Daniel was indeed a good person. He certainly lived up to the title of the starlight scattered among mortals. Daniel was born into an ordinary family and originally had a happy life. But one day, his younger brother was kidnapped by traffickers, shattering their happy family. While searching for his younger son, his father had an accident and died on the spot. His mother, devastated by the loss of her younger son and husband, had a mental breakdown and committed suicide by poisoning herself. This left 10-year-old Daniel alone and destitute. Daniel, who lost his entire family, grew up on the kindness of others, enduring many hardships to eventually become a three-time Best Actor winner. Despite his fame and success, Daniel never gave up searching for his lost brother. He founded the Come Home Foundation, dedicated to reuniting lost children with their families. He once said, I hope that one day, I can find my long-lost brother among these children. And I also hope that those who have lost their families like my brother can one day reunite with their loved ones. I do what I can, hoping everyone can be reunited with their family. Many people shed tears when he said this. Every time, every single time, when attending events, Daniel would bring a torn and blurry photo of a child, choking up as he pleaded for anyone with information to come forward. He even said that if he found his brother, he would donate all his wealth to charity. But despite struggling in the entertainment industry for over a decade, there was no news of his brother. And now, he himself had liver cancer and didn't have long to live. It was indeed tragic, making people sigh and feel a deep sense of pity. Honestly, being given the role of such a noble character made me feel deeply honored. I looked at Willow, ignoring the tears in her eyes. Don't worry. Portraying every role well is a basic quality of an actor. And I am a professional actor. The shooting progressed unusually smoothly. However, Willow came every day to personally oversee the production. She would sit by the camera, carefully watching every take of mine. Occasionally, I would hear the crew discussing Willow and Daniel's love story in private. Oh my god, I've always heard about Miss Lu and Emperor Wong's story, but I never thought it was true. A love between life and death, it's so touching. Isn't it? It's just a pity that Emperor Wong doesn't have much time left. Ah, the sweet moments in the midst of heartbreak. But I'm curious, why didn't they get together sooner? Right, Alex, since Miss Lu handpicked you, do you know any inside story? They didn't know that I was Willow's legitimate husband so they didn't avoid speaking in front of me and even wanted to discuss it with me. I closed the script and smiled. I don't really know. In truth, I did know. Although Daniel made his mark through talent and became an emperor through skill, a large proportion of his fans were girlfriend fans who treated him like a boyfriend. He feared that being in a relationship would lose him fans and hinder his career. So he never broke through the ambiguous relationship with Willow. Once, when a drunk Willow hugged me, she called out Daniel's name. Daniel, I won't be a hindrance to your career. If you don't want to be with me, I'll wait for you until you're willing. Daniel, I'm willing to do anything for you, including marrying someone else. Daniel, anything you want, I'll give you. From the first time you saved me, I've only liked you. This scene was also in the script. The lonely Daniel couldn't afford school and wandered around society. A young and beautiful Willow was harassed by a drunk hooligan, and it was Daniel who helped her, even beating the hooligan until his head was bleeding. He held her hand and ran wildly through countless streets and alleys, finally stopping by the sea bathed in the sunset glow. The boy and the girl smiled at each other, leaving an indelible mark in each other's hearts. Later, all of Daniel's school expenses were sponsored by the Lu family, and Willow provided many resources, both overtly and covertly, to help him become a three-time emperor. Seeing that I wasn't interested in discussing Willow and Daniel's love, they wisely changed the topic. Alex, your acting is really good. When the movie is released, you're sure to become famous. Yes, speaking of which, you really resemble Emperor Wong with similar looks and temperament, and your acting is equally good. If you had become famous earlier, maybe some of his three awards would have gone to you. Willow walked over and sat beside me, causing the two extras to hurriedly leave. Willow handed me a bottle of water. Alex, if one day you couldn't be an actor anymore, what would you choose to do? A sudden question made me turn to look at her. Willow, haven't you known the answer for a long time? Three years ago, when she destroyed my acting dream, she knew my choice. Willow was momentarily shocked. So, you would still stay by my side, right? But I coldly replied, no, I wouldn't. Willow, let's find a time to get divorced. I threw the script open to the part where Willow and Daniel first met into her lap. Hold on to your love story. Stop disgusting me. I never expected that Willow would once again use despicable means to frame me. When the film was halfway through shooting, 
Large-scale leaks of recordings and documents showing my refusal to donate my liver to Daniel began to spread online. The recordings were edited and clipped, resulting in this. No, I'm not willing. I will never donate my liver to Daniel. Give up on this. Daniel will be tormented by illness and will die horribly. People with liver cancer die emaciated and unrecognizable. Horribly. I will live well. This time, I faced unprecedented online harassment. Not only did it force the film's shooting to be suspended, but some crazy fans even tracked my whereabouts and threw rotten eggs at me on the street. I had no choice but to stay behind closed doors, and the film's shooting came to a halt. Now, Willow was sitting on the soft sofa in front of me, leisurely drinking coffee. She was gently rubbing the expensive jade bracelet on her wrist, her tone as if discussing a trivial matter. Alex, now that things have escalated, do you know what you need to do? She looked up at me, a slight smile on her lips. If you don't agree, the consequences might be unbearable. On the coffee table was the contract for the film, Starlight, clearly stating that if the filming couldn't be completed due to reasons caused by Party B, a breach of contract fee of 50 million was to be paid. Yes, I didn't have 50 million, and I couldn't afford such a huge penalty. I looked at Willow seriously. You edited and released the recording online, and stirred up public opinion just to force me to donate my liver to Daniel. Willow, you really are devoted to Daniel. Even using such despicable means, Willow's face turned noticeably pale. Alex, you forced me. If you had agreed from the start, I wouldn't have treated you this way. Daniel doesn't have much time left. I couldn't wait to slowly persuade you. Alex, I still mean what I said before. As long as you save Daniel, I will be wholeheartedly with you. Even if you have any after effects, I will take good care of you. You are my husband, and you don't have to do anything to enjoy the best life. What more do you want? She paused, placing a tablet with the trending searches in front of me. Look, now you're infamous. If I don't help clarify things, you will never be able to act again and will be a pariah. Alex, you have no choice. I picked up the cold tablet, watching the continually updating insults, feeling my heart grow colder bit by bit. In the end, I agreed. Okay, Willow, I'll do it, but I want to wait until after Starlight is released to have the surgery. You know, liver transplant surgery has risks. I might die. This might be my last work. Willow was silent. She seemed unwilling to wait any longer. I sneered. Willow, if you don't agree to my condition, then forget about getting my liver for Daniel. Eventually, Willow agreed to my request. After all, the film was more than halfway done, and with day and night work, it could be finished within a month. Willow had money and plenty of staff under her command. This wasn't difficult for her, I had to admit. Willow was very resourceful. The next day, she released a recording proving that the previous recording circulating online was maliciously edited. Of course, this new recording was also fake. With the help of her online influencers, the public opinion turned around within a day. The trending topic became hashtag feeling sorry for Alex wrongly accused hashtag, and I quickly returned to the set and resumed shooting. Willow continued to visit the set daily. However, her attitude changed. Previously, she demanded perfection in every take, but now she only cared about speed. With such intense shooting, as she wished, the filming was completed and edited within a month. The rough cut of the film was completed. To accommodate Daniel, Willow decided to take me to the hospital to watch it with him. In the private hospital's exclusive ward, Daniel lay on the bed, his breath weak and tubes all over his body. When he saw Willow, his eyes moved slightly, and he weakly raised his hand. Willow, you're here. Willow quickly stepped forward and held his hand. Don't move. Just lie down and rest. It was then that Daniel noticed me. I could tell he was surprised when he saw me. It's rare to find someone who looks so much like oneself. He smiled at me. Alex. Right. Nice to meet you. Honestly. I had a certain amount of genuine admiration for Daniel. A few years ago, when I was still a bit part actor in Hangdian, I regarded him as my idol. I also fantasized about one day sharing the screen with him. But things didn't go as planned. And we always missed each other. I bowed to Daniel. Mr. Wong. Nice to meet you. After watching the rough cut, Daniel's eyes were wet with tears. Good. Very good. Willow. Thank you for fulfilling my lifelong dream. I never thought I would one day be the protagonist in a film. Willow also choked up. Daniel. You deserve it. Be strong. In a few days. Willow hesitated. Daniel. You'll get better. In the spacious ward, there were many staff members, but at that moment, I felt exceptionally lonely and pathetic. They were moved by the love between Willow and Daniel. While I, the legitimate husband, was just an outsider. After leaving the hospital, Willow pulled me aside. She seemed annoyed. Alex. Why do you still want a divorce? I've agreed to be with you wholeheartedly. What more do you want? I sneered. It seemed she had just received the court summons. Earlier, my request for a divorce was rejected by Willow, so I had to file for divorce. Willow, I've changed my mind. I want to add one more condition. 
if you want me to donate my liver to Daniel, you have to agree to divorce me. Willow lowered her head, lost in thought. I thought she would compromise for Daniel, but she took a deep breath and softly said, No, Alex, I won't divorce you. She looked up at me, holding my hand tightly, speaking earnestly. Alex, after this is over, let's start over and be together properly. Okay. Alex, you have a place in my heart. Start over. How could we start over? Some things, once they happen, are irreparable, and no one can change that. I looked at Willow's face. She was as beautiful as she was at 18, but the innocence in her eyes had long been replaced by calculation. She was no longer the same person, and our long yet brief three-year marriage was an accident, and not being on the same path means we will part ways eventually. I wasn't sad. I only felt regret. Regret that the girl I cherished for so many years was no longer the same. Regret that the love I gave wholeheartedly was just an illusion. Regret that we never truly loved each other. I pulled my hand away from Willow's tight grip and firmly shook my head. No. Willow. My love for you died when you chose to hurt me over and over again for Daniel. At the Starlight premiere, I went on stage as the lead actor to give a speech. The densely written two pages were the speech Willow had personally written for me. She said, Alex, the filming has been exhausting. Leave everything else to me and just rest. Willow seemed to be trying to win me over. From the time we returned from the hospital to the week leading up to the premiere, she was with me almost every day. She even cooked a large meal for me herself. Seeing my surprised expression, her face, devoid of makeup, showed some nervousness as her hands unconsciously clenched her apron. Um, we've been married for years, and I've never cooked for you once. Alex, I will be a good wife from now on. I didn't eat that meal. I threw it all into the trash. It's useless. Willow, I won't be soft-hearted anymore. Willow, divorce is the only topic we can discuss now. Willow held back her tears and turned upstairs. She still refused to face the divorce issue, I thought. Perhaps she wanted to use marriage and love to bind me, to make me willingly donate my liver to Daniel. What a pity. I doubt there's such a fool in this world. The dazzling flashlights pulled me back from my thoughts. I casually threw the two pages into a nearby trash can and strode onto the stage. It was the first time I had been surrounded by so many people and so many lights. I smiled and took the microphone. First of all, thank you all for coming to the premiere of the film, Starlight. I am very honored to be part of this excellent film. After a brief speech, I paused. Regarding some rumors about me recently, I want to clarify a few things. Willow's face turned pale, and she whispered angrily, Alex, don't say anything nonsensical, there's no need to mention things unrelated to the film. To promote the film, Willow had invited almost all the media. If anything happened, it would be difficult to control the situation, no matter how much money she had. But what I wanted was an uncontrollable situation, especially since this was a live broadcast. Ignoring Willow's angry expression, I played a video on the big screen. It was the conversation between Willow and me at home, where I was forced to agree to donate my liver to Daniel. Willow tried to rush to change the video, but she was surrounded by countless reporters and couldn't get free. A reporter shoved a microphone in Willow's face. MS. Lou. According to the video, you and Alex are married, right? So how do you explain your relationship with Mr. Wong? MS. Lu. Was the rumor about Alex refusing to donate his liver to Mr. Wong a tactic to force Alex? The video mentions using such despicable methods again. Does this mean you've used similar tactics to frame Alex before? Why would you treat your husband this way? MS. Lu. Did Mr. Wong know about you forcing Alex to donate his liver? Or was it a joint effort? If the surgery goes wrong and something happens to Alex, will you be with Mr. Wong? The overwhelming questions left Willow gasping for breath. It took the security team a while to separate her from the reporters. Willow strode onto the stage, glaring at me. Alex, you're playing this game with me. I laughed derisively. Willow, you taught me this. I'm just treating you the way you treated me. She could record audio. I could record video. After being set up twice by her, how could I not be on guard? When I agreed to the deal with Willow, I had already set up hidden cameras, and this premiere was the perfect opportunity to reveal the truth. Willow was almost choking with rage but had to swallow her anger in front of the media. Alex, you. Things happened too suddenly. The huge crystal chandelier in the center of the stage suddenly fell, crashing straight toward me. Everyone held their breath. Some even quickly closed their eyes, not daring to witness the tragedy. My mind went blank, but I still pushed Willow, who was closest to me, out of the way first, before the pain overwhelmed me. I saw Willow's face, pale with shock. I seemed to hear her heart-wrenching scream. Alex. But Alex could only close his eyes in pain and despair. Sidestory Willow. Chapter 1. The Starlight premiere has been the hottest topic recently, maintaining its high profile for a week. But I had no time to care about public opinion. All I wanted was to stay outside Alex's hospital room, closely watching the heart rate monitor, afraid that in a blink, it would turn into a long, 
Flat line. Three days and nights. It had been three days and nights since Alex was knocked unconscious by the chandelier. I had also been thinking for three days and nights. I couldn't understand why Alex would risk his life to save me. He had clearly given up on me. Wanting a divorce. To leave me forever. I waited outside the ICU for three days. Until Daniel's assistant came to find me. He said Daniel was having another episode. In so much pain that he nearly wanted to end his life. I had no choice but to leave Alex's room and go to Daniel's. He was indeed in agony. The tubes were pulled out. His lips were pale. His eyes vacant. When he saw me, he called my name in pain. Willow, I'm in so much pain. Willow, I'm scared. I'm scared of what will happen to you if I die. I poured him a glass of water and carefully helped him drink it. Don't be afraid. Daniel, I will always be with you. After drinking the water, Daniel slowly calmed down. He held my hand tightly. His eyes filled with longing and hope. Willow, when can I get the liver transplant? I'm in so much pain. I can't bear it anymore. I froze. Involuntarily. I thought of Alex lying in the ICU. His fate still uncertain. Daniel seemed to see through my hesitation. He leaned his weak body against mine. Willow, you are my only family. You are the most important person to me. If even you won't help me, then there's no point in living. His eyes grew dimmer and dimmer. Willow, from the first time I met you, I was attracted to you. I fantasized countless times about walking down the aisle with you. We would have a son and a daughter, living a happy life. But before, I was unknown, unworthy of you. So I worked extra hard, just hoping to one day stand by your side. Unfortunately, the day came, but I got liver cancer. Willow, why does heaven play such cruel tricks? Keeping lovers apart, for some reason. Every word Daniel said made my heart ache. It seemed I really couldn't bear the pain of losing Daniel. I pressed my pale lips together. Daniel. Wait a bit longer. Alex is still in critical condition. So we can't perform the surgery yet. Daniel slowly sat up straight. His eyes like a dead lake. His tone indifferent as if stating something inconsequential. It's okay. Willow. You are Alex's wife. You can choose to give up on him. And then we can immediately proceed with the liver transplant. He turned to look at me. Willow. For me. You would be willing. Right. At that moment. I felt a chill down my spine. Only now did I understand that I didn't really know the man I had loved for so many years. Chapter 2. What happened at the premiere, I thought was an accident. I didn't expect my assistant to find something suspicious. She pulled me aside to a secluded place and whispered, Miss Lu, after investigating, it was found that the screws holding the crystal chandelier were loose, causing it to fall. But, the day before the incident, I saw Mr. Wong's assistant sneaking around the site. He was acting very suspiciously and had a ladder. My assistant said a lot, making my head buzz. Thinking about Daniel's words, it was hard not to overthink. I took a deep breath, investigate quietly, and don't alarm anyone, including Daniel and his people. My assistant stared at me for a moment, then nodded. Miss Lu, there are some things I really shouldn't say, but at this point, I can't keep quiet. All these years, everyone has seen how much you've done for Mr. Wong, but have you ever noticed what Alex has done for you? I realized I hadn't really looked at Alex. At first, a director recommended him to me, saying he was a great prospect, and he would eventually have a place in this flashy entertainment industry. So I went to Hengdian. He was indeed remarkable. Even playing a ragged beggar with a dirty face. His noble spirit shone through. Especially those dark and bright eyes. Surpassing all the actors I had seen. But when I saw Alex for the first time. I didn't think of promoting him. But of stopping him from rising. Because he looked so much like Daniel. And his acting was even more vivid and natural. Having two people who looked too similar in the entertainment industry wasn't good. I couldn't let him become Daniel's substitute. I wanted Daniel to be unique. So. Alex's existence was like a firework that needed to be extinguished before it could fully ignite. I had him sign a 10-year contract with my company, with terms that seemed to benefit him but were actually traps I set. During the occasional interactions in those two years, I found that Alex was indeed a good person. He was kind and polite, worked seriously and responsibly, and often stayed up late studying scripts, making every small role he played memorable. More than once, directors praised him as a good actor. The more they praised him, the greater my sense of crisis became. So I acted. Those edited videos and recordings quickly put Alex in the pillar of shame. With my manipulations, all the scripts and activities Alex had accepted were cancelled. He was very disappointed. Standing on the rooftop, with the cold wind blowing, I don't know why. At that moment, I saw the shadow of Daniel from years ago. An idea arose in my mind. Daniel wouldn't be with me because of his career. But what about Alex, who looked like him? He could become his substitute, staying by my side. He could alleviate my longing for Daniel and eliminate Alex's impact on Daniel's career. Two birds with one stone. So, I proposed marriage to Alex. I knew he would agree, because when he looked at me, his eyes were full of passion and sincerity. He liked me, I knew that. In the three years of marriage, 
Alex was absolutely a perfect husband, and in that marriage, I felt cherished and loved. I never got that feeling from Daniel, but I was too stupid. I thought Alex was just a substitute. Chapter 3 My assistant is very efficient and reliable. In just three days, she got to the bottom of it. It was indeed Daniel's assistant who did it. Caught red-handed. There was no way to deny it. The assistant frantically begged me not to call the police. Miss Lu, it was all Mr. Wong's doing. I accidentally overheard your conversation with Alex, and I knew you didn't want to divorce him. Alex also said that if you didn't divorce, he wouldn't donate his liver. I told Mr. Wong about it, and he came up with this plan. Miss Lu, for Mr. Wong's sake, you can't report me. Otherwise, Mr. Wong would be implicated in hiring someone to kill, and he wouldn't be able to get away with it. Miss Lu, you love Mr. Wong so much. As long as the liver transplant is successful, you two can be together. Why bother with the process? Does it matter? Does it matter? Those three short words made me think of the moment Alex pushed me away that day. It really does matter. But what should I do? Daniel and Alex. How should I choose? My assistant saw my hesitation and sighed. She took out her phone and opened the photo album. Miss Lu, maybe these photos will help you decide. In the photos, there was Daniel with two other men. They looked familiar. I thought for a moment and then remembered. They were the two men who tried to harass me when they were drunk. And in the photos, Daniel was handing those two men a bag of money. No need to say more. Everything was clear. I went to the hospital. Daniel looked much better. His complexion was even a bit rosy. When he saw me, he happily asked me to sit down. Willow, you've decided. Right. When are we doing the surgery? You know my body can't wait much longer. Daniel seemed certain that I would choose him. I didn't respond to him. I just took out my phone and showed him the photos my assistant had sent me. Daniel's face instantly lost its last bit of color. What? What does this mean? I looked up at him. Daniel, don't you want to explain? Daniel looked panicked but quickly calmed down. Oh, it must be a scene from some show that got photographed. Such a clumsy lie made me frown, but my heart was very calm. These two men are the ones who tried to harass me. So, from the beginning, you were lying to me, right? From the beginning, it was all Daniel's setup. He had been scouting for a target, and I, being beautiful and wealthy, was exactly what he needed. So, he teamed up with those two thugs to stage a hero saving the damsel act, making me fall for him. Then he climbed step by step on my shoulders, higher and higher, until he reached the top. But the higher you climb, the more exposed you become. Those two thugs were his weak point. So Daniel had to keep bribing them with money. Daniel remained silent. After a while, he flew into a rage. He smashed the items on the bedside table, fruits, medicines, scattering them all over the floor. Willow, what's the point of questioning me now? So what if I lied to you? Haven't I been good enough to you all these years? Haven't I helped you make a lot of money? I owe you nothing. Huh, I get it. You've had a change of heart, and you can't bear to let Alex die. So you're bringing up all these old matters to comfort yourself. Willow, you're despicable, disgusting. I had never seen such a crazed Daniel, in front of me, from the sunny boy to the gentle and kind emperor. He had always been kind and gentle. Now, I saw the real Daniel. Hideous. My heart sank. Daniel's vile words hurt me more than the truth did, and they made the last bit of love I had for him vanish. Daniel, to save your life, you bribed your assistant to try to kill Alex. Who is the despicable one? Daniel, at that moment, looked like a demon crawling up from hell, craving blood. His face was pale as paper, and his eyes glared at me with a fierce light as he pulled a sinister smile. It's all your fault, Willow. If you hadn't refused to divorce Alex, I wouldn't have come up with such a plan. I had already given up on living, planning to drag out my last days. It was you who told me Alex could give me a liver, that I could survive. You gave me hope, and now you want to cruelly take it away. Do you know how painful chemotherapy is? Do you know how terrifying it is to count your days? Do you know how scary it is to close your eyes, not knowing if you'll open them again? How could someone who has seen the light be willing to let go of the faint glimmer in the darkness? Willow, it's you who harmed Alex, and it's you who harmed me. I was stunned. The cold wind blowing in from the window seeped into my bones. Cold. So cold it was killing me. Chapter 4. In the end, the evidence of Daniel bribing his assistant to create an accident was handed over to the police. His assistant was arrested, and Daniel, suffering from a severe illness, was released on bail for medical treatment. However, Daniel's title of Starlight Scattered Among Mortals was ruthlessly torn down. Anonymous accounts dug up every detail of Daniel's past. He was indeed an orphan who grew up on the charity of others, but he was also a child with sticky fingers, frequently stealing from other children. His charity foundation, Come Home, was exposed for money laundering. Even more shocking were the revelations from insiders that Daniel's missing brother had actually been abandoned by him. Daniel had shown jealousy towards his brother multiple times and had even made threats to kill him. 
All of Daniel's good deeds were revealed as mere covers for his ugly heart. The film Starlight, starring Alex, was pulled before it could be released. My company suffered heavy losses. Due to my relationship with Daniel, I too faced online harassment and police investigation. Those who manipulate public opinion will eventually be consumed by it. Daniel and I are no exception. Chapter 5 Alex woke up two months later. It was just as winter arrived and everything had settled. The day he was discharged from the hospital, it started to snow. I suddenly remembered that the day I first met Alex was also a snowy day. We looked into each other's eyes, but our expressions were different. Now, after everything, our gazes met again. His was calm and indifferent, while mine was filled with deep emotion. Alex. I called his name. Thank you for saving me that day. During the time you were unconscious, I thought a lot. It was my fault before. I wronged you. You gave up your dreams to be with me. You gave me your heart, and I trampled on it again and again. If possible, I. I hope you can give me a chance to make amends. I didn't dare to look into his clear eyes. My voice choked more and more as I spoke. But Alex's indifference shattered my last bit of hope. We have no future together, and you will never have a chance to make amends. The moment the harm was done, it became a permanent scar. Willow, if you feel sorry for me, then agree to the divorce. Let's each live our own lives. From now on, stay away from me. Alex's voice was so cold. It pierced my heart. I could only stand helplessly in the distance. Cold snowflakes falling on my nose, gradually melting. I didn't even know if the drops on my face were melted snow or cold tears. Many times before, I spoke to him with the same cold and heartless words, not caring if he was hurt, what goes around comes around, and now it's my turn to suffer. In the end, I agreed to the divorce. After a period of recovery, Alex looked in good shape. I heard that the director of Starlight thought highly of him and decided to give him the lead role in his latest film. This director was highly regarded in the industry, and with his support, Alex would surely shine brightly in the entertainment world. He would walk the star-studded path that was always meant for him. I watched Alex's figure gradually disappear, feeling increasingly empty inside. Suddenly, he turned around. Goodbye, Willow. Then he left without looking back. I knew this goodbye was forever. Alex no longer wanted to see me. As night fell and the stars twinkled, I finally understood that I once had true starlight. He was brilliant, bright, and shone without embellishment. But unfortunately, I lost him.